to carry on the tradition of your older folks so that we can continue to have changes for a better community and a better world. I, I would say you lead that example 200%. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, people uh, certainly look up to you and, yeah. and do follow your lead. So it's important. And this, according to my wife, is a model of a great man, Dr. Martin Luther King, taking the encouragement of the president of the United States at that time to break the racial barriers in terms of housing. Now, many people may not know that, but I do because I was there. For Marquette Park, the March Marquette on Marquette Park. Park in 1966. I was one of the people who helped to plan that march. That's amazing. Would you like to share some stories about that? Well, by this time, Dr. King has become well known throughout the country for bringing about change, had the courage and his style of nonviolence was a, a thing that was a model of bringing about change without violence. And at that time, there were many cities like New York and Pittsburgh and Cleveland where the overcrowding of the African-American community made getting more space to live in very desirable for education, for all the reasons that we live in the urban areas. And most of the leaders in that city, and that's the story of the man, had black leadership, which felt an obligation more to the to the st people who ran the city and they resented the idea that after the president had made that comment that in the demonstration in another city of Chicago, that the barriers should be broken, then Dr. King wondered which city and leadership in the cities like New York and Pittsburgh and other big cities did not want Dr. King to come into their place and what they call tr cause trouble. But in Chicago, because one of Dr. King's schoolmates said, in the college that they both attended in Atlanta, I forget the name of it, pardon the old man's memory, uh, who also was a student at, at, at uh, DuSable High School with, with, with me. Uh, that was a place that would be open for the planning, Liberty Baptist Church. The pastor there, I'm trying to think of the name again. When you get to be 102, you, your memory isn't what it was when you were 42. And so we began to plan. Now, by this time, a lot of young people across race and all the division, physical division, had been with Dr. King in the Southern demonstration. And one of the young men was Reverend Jesse Jackson. And so we began to plan that operation in Liberty Baptist Church located 
in 48th and what is now Martin Luther King Drive at that time was uh, South Park. And there were those who had been with Dr. King in the South, black and white, young people, who said they could take the nonviolent operation in the South, but they could not stand it in a place like Chicago. They were urban youngsters and others. And they suggested that Dr. King not carry on, but he had made a commitment and so we planned it. And it was, I forget the date, the demonstration started in Market Park, out right outside Market Park. And we walked westward on the boulevard against the shouts and screams of Caucasians who lived in that neighborhood against what Dr. King, not all, but many. And suddenly as we marched along, one of the bricks struck Dr. King and knocked him down. I, who grew up <laughs> in Chicago and had many encounters on long racial lines and always could defend myself, said to myself, I could take that in the South, but I said to myself, if one of them MF hit me, the nerd violent marches are over. But Dr. King got up, forgiven the people who had attacked him and continued the march. Now, out of that experience, a young man who was then, I think, a student in Catholic seminary, he was so embarrassed by the behavior of people in his community that he began to devote his life to bringing about equality. That man was Reverend Father Flager. Father Flager. And he continues that mission today. And I'm fortunate it was a while he will call me to talk about the civil rights movement and Market Park in particular. He is a great man, but he was inspired also by a great man, Dr. Martin Luther King. And it inspired many of us to continue the mission of equality on all levels, including housing in this country. Can you uh, share with us uh, who was at the meeting? Who was at the planning meeting? Well, I can't remember all the names, but I do remember um, Jesse, Reverend Jesse Jackson, who was a young man who had been <clears throat> at the uni at the University of Chicago Divinity School, but he had helped to organize a young people's group in North Carolina when Dr. King was there. He was going. He was a young student at North Carolina, and he helped to organize SNCC student non. Uh, violent operation SNCC coalition. In the coordinating committee. Yeah, he was active from that point. And when he and his wife 
moved to Chicago to, for him to go to the divinity school. I talked with Dr. King and Dr. King, he said he knew a young man in Chicago and therefore that was the time which I first met uh, Reverend Jackson and have continued that friendship. But there were many others I can't, I wish I could remember all the names. But if you have any kind of informational source, many of those people are still active politically wherever they may live. I can't remember all the names. I wish I could, but of when course. you get to be 102, you remember <laughs> it and what it was and when you were younger. And when did you start getting involved? What Do you remember the year or the time period that you started getting involved with activism? Well, I have been involved almost all of my adult life. When she, the black community in Chicago named by Robert Abbott, the founder of Chicago Defender, who called it the Black Belt, a person of, by the name of, of J. LeVert Kelly, St. Louis Kelly, started organizing uh, working groups in, who were being underpaid in the segregation of the South Side Black Belt. J. LeVert Kelly, St. Louis Kelly, we called him. And we had a theme, don't spend your money where you can't work. And if you hired me, I could demand a certain hourly salary, which was not available if I was outside. And so from that point, I have always been active in community organizing beyond just work, beyond just housing. The peace movement was part of my ambition. And so I have enjoyed it. And, and particularly you with younger people who needed that inspiration through examples of older people who had fought for change. And so Dr. King was a, an example, an outside tremendous example of the courage and the preparation. And so he stood out from his beginning in, in Alabama to the end of his life. Well, uh, Tim, do you remember around what year you got involved or uh, was it the 1920s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s? The 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and all of those, I have been active as much as, as, as I could and inspired younger people to get involved, not discouraging them from going forward in terms of education or other things that might have been, but to be involved in bringing about change and using history, the slavery. I say to many of them across race lines, when you go shopping, what do you go looking for? And they will from around, go down to, I said, shopping, eventually one of those young people would say, Mr. Black, 
when I go shopping, I look for the best I can find for the cheapest price. Where do you think the slave traders did when they go into Africa? The best they could find for the cheapest price. And they brought them, but most of them said in the tradition without singing the lyrics, before I be your slave, I'll be buried in my grave. But my African ancestors, and I say that because all African, almost all African Americans are mixed. I have Irish background, I have Native American background, but I get accused and rejected and abused because of my African background. And so that kind of attitude share, to share that experience and indicate to you younger people, go talk with your older relatives and see how they felt the optimism of bringing about change that you now enjoy. You therefore, in respect to your older ancestors who gave up so much, they had the feeling, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Oh my Lord, without dealing in a particular religion, that has been one of the feelings that I had the obligation to younger people as I tried to inspire them and inform them by experience of the world that I grew up in, the segregation, all the other things, the housing and jobs, and that that is not in tune with American promise. We hold these truths to be self-evident. We insert the word, all people are created equal, endowed by the creator with sir. And so when I insert those ideas and that history, I have found that young people and all people, in fact, feel an obligation to follow Dr. King's and other heroes in India and other places, their lead, that they didn't have to be taking those risks, but they felt an obligation. Gandhi and others that are heroes of the world, they didn't, but they brought about social, economic, political change in their environment. Dr. King was inspired by those models and inspired others in the United States by his behavior. And so those who came up in my period and who were, feel obligated to continue the struggle. And so even at 102, I'd like to carry those stories to younger people and make them believe that they have an obligation to their generation and the generation of their younger people to keep the movement moving. And Market Park was an example of a unification of people in Chicago, but people from across the country to bring about a change in housing. And to a limited extent, it succeeded, but the struggle goes on. 
Well, thank you so much. What an informative um, interview and you're, you're remarkable and your memory is remarkable and all your um, things that you've accomplished over a lifetime, just giving back to people and, and setting a, an amazing example to follow. I hope that our conversation has been worth your time. It certainly has, Tamuel, and, and uh, you're a blessing, blessing for many people. And we thank you for a lifetime of a very generous soul giving, to, giving back to the people and the world and making a difference. There is a, you need the materialism that exists, food, clothing, and shelter, but you also need the spirituality of life that is reflected by people like Martin Luther King, who brought about change by his willingness to be sacrificial of the materialism of life. There were others before him, but he is a glaring example of inspiring people like Timuel Black <laughs> to keep on keeping on. And to do the right thing. That's right. Uh, well, thank you again and happy birthday again and uh, to many more birthdays, Tim. I intend to <laughs> be Black. the case. <laughs> well, we love you and uh, have a wonderful holidays. And here's to a uh, Hopefully a very healthy 2021. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Big hugs right. to you. And Zenobia back there. Hello. Yeah, yeah she's right here. We hey. love you. <laughs> <laughs>